everyone. My name is Professor Ethel Tungelhun, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Politics here at York University, and I'm also a faculty associate here at the GLRC. For May Day, what we would like to do is present to you some of our student research assistance reflections on the interview series that we conducted on COVID and the world of work, which you can find in the GLRC website. Hello everyone, my name is Christina Love and I'm one of the researchers who worked on the project Worker Stories in the COVID-19 Era. As the interview series has drawn to a close and in honor of May Day or International Workers Day, the Global Labor Research Center has invited myself and fellow researchers to reflect back on this project and share a bit about our perspectives. So I will say right off the bat, coming into this project, I was unprepared for how absolutely human it would get. When you think about workers and workers' rights, a lot of things will pop into your head. Most of them are sort of abstract and detached. You think of statistics like, oh, back in 2021, we had a 7.5% unemployment rate. Or you hear about like mass layoffs in whichever sector. Um, and you hear all of these things, but you don't really absorb them. They don't really hit you very deep. It's a lot of just, huh, that sucks. Um, working on this project, you can't do that. Um, the connection was just a necessity and hearing workers relate their own experiences in their own words I've never felt more connected to worker organizing, except when I was in the process of organizing a union um, and hearing about my coworkers' experiences um, and the injustices that they faced. And I think that this is a takeaway that is super important to connect with one another and to humanize experiences because every injustice that is happening to workers everywhere is happening to people. And we need to recognize and acknowledge that these are other people that are suffering. They are not statistics, they are our communities. And branching off into that, another reflection that I would like to share is how worker anger, proletarian anger is so justified and we need to be feeling this. It is not natural for us to repress so much of who we are in order to just move past and move along and hopefully move through. That's a lot of what I have been seeing throughout the pandemic across uh, sectors, is that people will just head down, go forward. That's all they can do, that's all they know how to do, because if they are allowed to feel emotions, if they allow themselves to feel emotions, especially considering the injustices that are being perpetuated against them, They'll just explode. But I think that is, is important to honor that anger, honor that anger and translate it into action. The next most important thing that I think we can take away from the series is how crucial it is now more than ever to organize as workers for the justice of all of us. We are the many and we deserve justice. It doesn't have to be like this, and we can make it different. Hi, my name is Hugh Matthew, and I'm a PhD candidate with School of Human Resources Management at York University. I was a part of GLRC's project called Worker Stories in the COVID-19 Era. Me and my fellow researchers interviewed quite a few workers from Canada and across the world. It was a great experience here directly from workers about challenges, difficulties, and hardships that they had to go through. Some of them lo lost their jobs. Some of them had to work lesser number of hours, and some of them were forced to work more number of hours, but with no code protocols in place, or with little assurance about their health and safety at workplaces. So the challenges faced by workers were wide and varied. The social and economic impacts of COVID-19 on worker communities were not tolerable as well. Care for children 
and care for elderly became a major concern for most of these workers. And this was the case with developed and developing countries. However, trade unions became a big relief to workers in several occasions. And again, this was applicable in the case of formal sector and informal sector. Trade unions were able to negotiate with governments, employers, and other stakeholders to make sure that the welfare of the workers were taken care of. They were also able to provide personal protective equipment and other support to workers when they were in need. There was a lot of inquiry from non-unionized workers about union membership and union activities during COVID-19. So the big reflection for me from these interviews is the fact that union is strength and hence workers of the world unite. Thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne and I was one of the researchers on this project. I was really privileged to be part of this project and that throughout the project I had the opportunity to interview a number of people in a number of countries around the world and I learned a lot. Overall, I learned that people, no matter where in the world they are from or what their job is, as long as they are selling their labor, what they want is really simple. They just want to go to work, they want to get paid, and they want to be safe. So first of all, people who have to go to work for the most part just want to go to work. The idea, no matter how widespread it is that employees are looking for opportunities to slack off or steal time, is just unfounded. Everyone I interviewed from teachers and line cooks in Ontario to taxi drivers in Europe to fishermen in Malta, people just want to do their jobs. Before the pandemic, there was this widespread idea that working from home or flexible work arrangements should be reserved for most senior or most trusted employees in that employees needed a degree of surveillance or control to maintain any efficiency or productivity. But if I've learned anything, it is that that is just not true. Another thing I learned, uh, and this is no huge surprise, but people just want to do their work and they just want to get paid. And they want to be paid fairly. We know that working people, particularly low-wage workers who are disproportionately women and workers of color, have largely borne the cost of this pandemic, but they have not been paid fairly, and we all know it. While low-wage workers continue to be essential, well after the temporary pandemic pay has ended and well after we stopped calling them essential workers well after the height of our pandemic fears has passed it is still our responsibility to advocate for and fight for fair wages as much as people just want to go to work and just want to get paid people around the world just want to be safe covid19 has upended the labor market with disastrous consequences and has truly highlighted the really awful conditions that workers around the world face. Even though what workers really want is so simple, just do their jobs, get paid, and be safe. After hearing from Christina, Tinu, and Suzanne, it is clear that worker precarity has increased during COVID. And in fact, the struggles that workers face are continuing. So today, for May Day, let's remember that it is incredibly important for us to keep organizing. It is incredibly important for us to be part of workers' collectives and also to support the demands of labor unions. May Day is a day where we have to learn to appreciate the power of acting together as a collective. So with that, we'd like to say thank you for listening and for watching our video.